Well, it's just, it's an honor for us to be here. We're just very excited to be. It's been a long time since I visited uh, the church, and so I just want to, of course, thank you so much for your faithful support. Um, the, the amount does not matter, but the faithfulness is what matters, and so we're very happy about that. I'd like to uh, kind of divide up what I'm going to do for, they asked me for also for church, and so what I'm going to do now at Sunday School is I've got some slides, so uh, PowerPoint, and I'm going to run through them pretty quick and explaining what we, what we do and our work that goes on now. And then in, in church, I'm going to, I, I call it a look back, and then go back into the mission and show you how we've grown. And so that, because you are, are your church has been a very big part of that, so we'd like to, uh, like to show you, share that, some of that. Um, I'm going to start with our education in the Manila Bible Seminary. This is the entrance to our seminary in the Philippines. And this is our, our road that goes up. We have our, our buildings. We want to show you our buildings. They are the, this is the dining hall inside. The, the, these tables were given to us by the United States Navy when they closed up at Subic Bay. They uh, donated the, the uh, tables. There is a kitchen in back and a, a work area to prepare the food. We cook uh, three meals a day for the students and, so, and some of the faculty. I also want to tell you because in coming newsletters, you're going to be noticing that there's a, a project to remodel this kitchen. There's a group of um, what we not been, they're not businessmen, they're architects, carpenters, professional. They're yeah, they're businessmen. <laughs> The, they're, but they're all, and they're going to the Philippines, and they're going to remodel this as soon as we're able to uh, from, uh, get the money raised for it. But you'll be reading about that in the years, to, uh, in the months to come. So you'll know that this is the kitchen that's going to be. And there's the students sitting around eating, getting ready, to ha having their uh, lunch. We also receive rice donations from the Philippines. Uh, many of our members have a rice mill, or they plant the rice in the fields. And as a gift to the seminary, they give us the, the rice, and we keep that. This is our boys dorm, our old boys dorm. This is no longer the boys dorm. It is now housing our dorm father and uh, guest rooms, of, and uh, upstairs is the fellowship hall. This is our new dorm, and the old dorm housed 78 boys. The new dorm will hold 150. And so there, there's some of them out in the front of that there. Then, we wanted to show you a room before the boys moved in. This is what the new room looked like. And then the boys put their beds together and uh, move them into their room and carry their, uh, what you call a part or their uh, chest uh, and an to put their clothes in. And then there's the beds that they put together. This is the girls' dorm. The boys' dorm is called McElroy Hall. The girls' dorm is called Wolf Hall after our missionaries there. And th this is the inside of the girls' dorm. They have a, a desk, they have their beds, they have closet space that they can use. This is a student center. This is a place where the students can get together, they can play games, there's a little canteen, they can play ping pong, or if their parents come, they can sit and visit here inside. This is another one of our buildings. All of our buildings are cement and steel, and they're, they're permanent buildings, they're not uh, we, they, they withstand all of our typhoons as well. This is our, our music building. Uh, this is where um, Mr. Ostick, Jim's, I mean, excuse me, Nikki's husband, was head of the music department. And this is a, one of the practice rooms. And then the other one in the corner is our conference room and also a bigger classroom. We have 10 practice rooms and we have six pianos. The, the oldest piano that's in there was from 1927. And they've all been refurbished in our, in our work happy about that. This is our largest building. This is the James Willis Hale, also named for one of the missionaries. It's our library and classrooms and chapel. This is our uh, chapel. We had a guest from Korea at that time that we took this picture. This is one of our classrooms. We have five classrooms in this building. We also use the chapel as a classroom. This is our library. We have uh, 14,000 uh, volumes of books in the library for the students to use. We, now don't laugh at our computers, please. 
<laughs> I know you're going to. But that they, they work, and that's what counts. That's how we teach the students to, for their basic skills of typing and uh, of computer. This is the faculty um, that are serving at the seminary and teaching. All of these uh, young men and women have been educated at the seminary. Some of them have gone back to the United States to take further studies, but they have returned to teach at our school. And this is the staff, the people that run the kitchen and the office and the dorms. And these are our students, just to show you some of our boys are all dressed up, ready to go out to their preaching points. They go out on the weekends to a serve, a serve a church, and the young women will do their music or uh, Christian ed classes. They, and they get ready to go. And then they, this group was going up to Prayer Mountain, so they're kind of uh, excited with their guitars and everything. And this is the student body. We had 120 students and 27 faculty and staff. And all Filipinos, one, one American, uh, who is Jim McRoy, uh, Dr. Excuse me, Dr. McRoy, who is the president of the school. I'll show you in a minute. We had a, a team come from Parkcrest Christian Church in Long Beach, California, and they built us a stage. And the, um, the, these are the steps that they're putting in. And then they built us a sound booth, and it's much like this one back here. They also covered it with carpet. That's very, very similar to, to yours. And they also put in all kinds of electronics and overhead projectors and speakers. And you should have seen the students when they started bringing these big speakers in. Boy, the, the students were almost escorting them in. They were so excited to have, have them in there. They, they also, uh, because we have the neighbors that live over our wall, you know, have a tendency to come in and steal things the clothes off the line or shoes left outside and so in the back I, I don't know what that thing is back there with all those le levers on it what sound a soundboard our soundboard has a box over it that we lock oh, with padlocks so, so that nobody can mess with it so but that's uh, but we were very happy to have this um, these are our graduates uh, this year graduation is March 21st coming right up and we're going to have uh, 30 again. This is last, last uh, March. We're going to have 30 students again to graduate. We also have a master's class. Anyone that's been out of uh, school uh, for three years can attend our master's classes. And we have Americans come over from the United States and teach. It's Dr. Travis, who was from Cincinnati Christian University at that time. He's now with Kentucky, and he's, uh, he came in and taught. And then, the other young man, the other man that was taught was from the Philippines. But uh, these men come from all over the islands to attend the master's uh, classes. And uh, many of them are graduates of our school or of the other Bible colleges that are around the Philippines. This is Dr. Uh, Jim, and his wife is also his doctor, Carla McElroy. They, they live in Seattle. Jim goes back and forth to the Philippines and serving as president. I stepped down as president uh, a year ago, November, and he has been president since then. We also have our Vacation Bible School seminar. If, uh, if you've been reading our newsletters, you know we have this every year. And then students come from all over the islands to attend this. We have 90 churches usually represented and over 200 young people coming. These are teachers who come to learn how to do a vacation Bible school. We have, I should mention, we have been given permission by Standard Publishing to reproduce everything in the Philippines. And so we can, we can take their kit of vacation Bible school, run it off, and then we give it to the students that come to attend. We cannot duplicate their crafts, so we make our own crafts. And our, our uh, Christian ed department at the seminary makes their own things. And so these are some of the things that they've made. And I'm sure they look familiar because they use many of the same ideas, just different uh, things available in the Philippines. And these are just some of the pictures of the kids in the class at the, at the Vacation Bible School. I also, I saw in your letter that um, you had uh, IDES represented. Uh, a man from IDES was here a few months ago telling you about the disasters that they support and I can show you firsthand some of the disasters that we have in the Philippines that we also are part of, of uh, 
helping people. This is the flood. That the man is just taking, ferrying people around in, in his boat. This is a two-story house. The, uh, I don't know. If you look closely on the porch, you see the dogs? And they are chained. You see, you can see their chains, but they're floating on a door. They have their dog sitting on a door in the water, and their, their first their first floor is totally gone. Then this is what happens when the water goes down. All of the garbage goes to one area. This is uh, Dr. McElroy and with uh, with Skip Daniels. They, with the money that we are given, we go to the grocery, we buy rice, we buy food. The churches bring clothing. Uh, donation. The, the local churches bring their donations. We have over 40 in the city of Manila where I live. And then we divide everything up and put them in plastic bags. We put men's, women, uh, children's clothing in bags. We put rice, noodles, milk, sardines, what else? <laughs> um, just all kinds of foodstuffs that we can buy and put them in the bags. And then we take them to the church and the preacher of that church is responsible for telling us who is has been involved in the disaster. And that's how we kind of keep track of everybody and everything. We are very, very thankful for ICE participation. And uh, this water is down Main Street. You see the uh, orange and white plastic bags. That's the ones we used on this trip. And we had to go out in a box boat. There's my red hair in the corner. And uh, the, the people brought their own boats up to us and then we handed them their, uh, their excuse me, donation, their, their clothing and their food. The man in the red t-shirt here, standing in the water, is the elder of the church. And he was telling the people from the church, you know, bring your boat up right here, like directing traffic out there in the water. So there I'm giving somebody walking right up to the boat. You can see them I'm handing out. I got in the boat and they covered me with all the bags. <laughs> and, and, my, and my brother was up on the front, sitting up in the front. So we're the ones that we just handed them out as we could. And this this church is um, in this Santa Cruz area. It, they were their water. You can see where the water line was in this flood. And they lost everything. They lost their sound system, all their pews and everything. And they re, refurbished themselves. And a flood in October. Yeah. Past, yeah, past October, uh, again. And this term, this time, the church collapsed. And so this this little church is no longer there. And they have decided to. Of course, they removed. They going up higher and going out. Um, some of the people don't have a boat. They just send their kids out to come and get it. The little boys put them on their head and go. And this lady put her baby in a horse basin, walked out in that awful water. And and you know when we're sitting in the boat, boat, and my brother, my brother Jim had to be smart and he started, you know, because it's it's a, like a canoe, but it has outriggers, so it won't. It's not supposed to tip over. Let me just say, <laughs> it's not supposed to tip over. But he started doing that. I started screaming. I said, no, don't do that. And I looked down there to see fish in the water. <laughs> I thought, I, I don't want to go in and drink them. <laughs> but, but this lady, that's how she came to get her. Um, I also, these are some of the, just want to show you some of the churches that have been that have been built in the Philippines. These are, uh, we're not going to go over all of them, but uh, just give you an idea of what they look like. This is the group afterwards. We were pretty tired. But we brought all the donations for their members inside, and then no members would come to the church. These are just some of the congregations. The home church. This church started in our yard when I was a little girl, and uh, now it's really a big, strong church. has their own building. This is a... Skip Daniels, missionary in the Philippines as well. He's working with the street children in the, and in the, what do you call it? Dump? <laughs> this lost it's the water. Area. It's a it's squatter, the but it's where they dump oh, the garbage. Oh. The dump site, they, they uh, all the garbage trucks go to this place and dump the trash into mountains and mountains of trash. And the people go through it and recycle. And then they, they can get paper and cans and bottles 
and put them in bags and then they resell them down at the end of the garbage dump and to somebody down there. But Skip is uh, working with this group. His, he and his wife were there together and she passed away about a year ago. So he is remaining there. Uh, we had also a group from Cincinnati come and uh, so we cook, there was a special birthday, so we fry, I'm frying chicken. And the boys down here in the corner are packing spaghetti into a, uh, into the salad bowl. And these are the children that they're going to feed. There were 158 there that day. They are given numbers and they, they line up and they give their number to the people that are passing out the salad bowl dishes. There the kids are eating. There's a, uh, uh, th th this day was special because it's a birthday. In the Philippines, you have to eat noodles on a birthday. And so they think that's for long life. So we had a fried chicken leg and noodles and an orange juice. Usually, it is rice and vegetables and then like a piece of fruit, like a banana or an orange or something like that. So, but but uh, they were very excited because it was special to have spaghetti. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound special to us, but it was to them. <laughs> and then this, this is a picture of my staff when I was still living over there. And I had to include this so I could just brag a little bit. They had a party for me for my 50 years of service in the Philippines. And so this was at, this was at the party. And so, and this is the work of the, the Philippine Mission Net Center. We do, we do church planting, the Vacation Bible School Seminar, the jail ministry. I will mention that in a minute, and Manoa Bible Seminary, and then Feed My Lost Lambs is the name of what Skip Daniels does in the Feed My Lost Lambs. The, the jail ministry, if, if you've been already reading about our uh, ministry in the Philippines, you know we had a campus, medical, and a jail ministry also included with all these other things that we're doing. The jail ministry has been completely turned over to Filipinos. And the local churches in the city, well, like I mentioned, there are 40, uh, are supporting that ministry. And we, we also uh, support from time to time, but we don't do that. It was started back in 1938 by uh, Hans, Robert Hansen with our, with our mission. And so from then up to a few years ago, just what, a year or two ago, it's been turned over to the Filipinos. That's very exciting. And every once in a while, they'll come and say, don't you, want to, don't you want to make a donation for medicine for the prisoners? And I say, sure. Or we'll, we'll do a campaign to raise money to buy um, a rubber slippers. I what you call them. Yeah, rubber slippers or uh, yeah, flip-flops, yeah. And uh, toothbrushes. And we'll ask, the, we'll ask a Colgate Palm Olive in the Philippines if they want to donate a box of toothbrushes and toothpaste for the prisoners. I think we still do things like that to keep... But also the medical ministry was something that what we started. And um, I used to be um, the, the schedule, every medical ministry, every team that went out, I had to get the doctors, the nurses, the dentists, the pharmacists. I had to collect all the medicine. I had to repack all the medicine. The ostics were in the way back, oh, thousands and thousands of bottles of medicine. And we were just, I mean, we've done, this is how it started. And we, we uh, go to a church and set up a, a desk. The people would come, the doctors would see them, the, the pharmacists would issue the medications to the, those that we had, and that's how the medical team started. And then there were students that were walking around with the people and doing evangelism, you know, inviting them to church and taking care of that. And so that has also been turned over to the Filipinos. That your local churches are the ones that are doing this. And many of them are doing their own uh, medical ministry out of that. And so we're very excited to see that as well. The campus minister, excuse me, campus ministry, we are still supporting um, partially, I guess is what you call, because the preachers are allowed in the, in the Philippines to go into um, the elementary schools and the high schools and have Bible classes. I know that doesn't happen here. But also, and we're very happy for the, very thankful for the Gideons because the Gideons then uh, go in ahead of us and give the students Bibles so that when we go there for the Bible study, 
their, uh, that is part of the campus ministry, not only college <coughs> campuses, but also high schools and elementary schools. And in fact, um, some of the schools uh, that were doing this asked our preachers to hold a Bible study for their teachers. And so that's very exciting to see as well. Well, we still are, we are still, I don't know how to explain it, keeping tabs on it, but we, we are not, um, how do you, what do you say, Nick? <laughs> Help me out here. You're not funding it fully. Not, yeah, we're the not. Churches are taking yes. the, the, each church has, ta like his, they, if their preacher is involved in campus ministry, they have stepped in and are kind of, you know, sponsoring him to do that. Then the mission no longer is completely the one doing it. So that's the goal, you know, to get the people to do these. And so, so we're excited that these these ministries have um, have done this. Let me see that uh, the jail ministry take they take volunteers from the church. The preacher will go in and preach, and it's or it's organized by a team that will ask a certain church, like, can you be there this Sunday with, and they take them in. So it's not just haphazard to go in. And they have to have permission. And yeah, one of, one of the things that they learned is that when they go into the prison, um, they are given a stamp on their hand, and the stamp is pretty big. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a great big uh, ink, <laughs> ink spot. And so many times the prisoners will walk up to our our preachers and say, "I I will give you I will give you five hundred dollars if if you hold my hand." <laughs> and, the, and the preacher does the preacher thought he needed comforting. You know? uh -huh. He didn't know what he was doing, and so then and the guy kept looking at his hand, and what he was trying to do was to get that thing to transfer. So he could walk out, you know. And a, anyway, we, they learned pretty quick that they weren't supposed to hold hands in front of anybody. So. But they also go into the women's prison. And so uh, we are still helping a little bit with that. But, local, but the, the churches, the local churches are the ones that are doing this. I guess I should have started out by telling you that live, we live in the city of Manila. And the, the numbers on the internet go from anywhere from 18 million to 22 million people live in the city of Manila. So a little bit bigger than we Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Not nearly as pretty. Though. <laughs> and, uh, but that's, I mean, I know it's staggering. But in, that, in the churches of either 17 or 22 million, we have 40 churches that have been established in that, in that area. And that's the city that I live in. So when, when I was uh, living there, so do you have any questions that you'd like to ask? I I want you to I want you to have all the information that you uh, need, and I know you've been supporting a long time, and you know I it's been a long time. Yes. Are you living there on a permanent basis? I just returned. I returned from the Philippines, and I'm living now in the United States. Um, we found out. I, we have another missionary, um, she, although she's not, well, she will be okay, connected, she's full of mission. Um, she lives up north and has a, north of the city of Manila, and has a children's home. And she had a very severe back problem and needed emergency surgery on her back. And the Medicare had told her that if she goes into an emergency room in a foreign country, that Medicare will pay. They will not pay to go to a regular doctor or a checkup. If it's an emergency, Medicare will pay in a foreign country. It's not true. She went in and had the surgery done in a hospital in Manila, and Medicare refused to pay. And so that's a little bit hard on, you know, somebody on a, on a missionary salary not have to and have insurance. Uh, I just helped her, uh, you know, again. And uh, so 
my board that's here in one, the one here in America decided that I needed to come back to the United States because if I was to get sick, what would what would be? <coughs> and they the insurance in the Philippines that you can buy stops when you're 70. And I just and I just turned 73 <laughs> so, on my birthday a couple weeks ago. So um, the, the board said, better come back. And, and I, I'm in good health, thank God. I don't take any medicine. I'm, I, uh, I'll have fell down and broke my kneecap, but other than that, I, I'm just, I'm doing all right. But that's why I'm back in America. I would, uh, I miss the country very, very much. I mean, I was raised there as my parents, and then I've lived there, um, what did we decide, 60? 63 years of my life have been in that country. So, you know, it's a little different to come here and to live. Home, you know, oh, home. Yeah, it is home. I'm getting used to the snow. <laughs> 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 and we know it's tropics. The Philippines is hot all the time. We, we say we have hot and hotter. Those are our seasons. <laughs> and I learned how to shovel snow, though. <laughs> <laughs> this past month, we're not even used to the snow. <laughs> Oh, There's so much of it. Yes. <laughs> and so cold. Yeah, frigid. Wow. You know, you, I remember when we were home on furloughs, when, when we were kids, we used to play outside. And the kids aren't allowed to go outside. <laughs> it's too cold. Their fingers are freeze up. <laughs> I did see some snowmen, though, this time. Maybe it warmed up a little bit. But, uh, yeah, anyway, we, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm learning to. But I'm traveling also, like now, you know, coming and speaking to the churches that have been supporting us. So that's another good opportunity. And then Dr. McElroy is taking over the school, so that's that's why. And the and the evangelism. So. Yes. What about the language? Is there any barrier? Uh, no, the the Philippines they speak English, but they do have their national language. Right. There's a it's called Tagalog. And then the, the, there are three regions that have three main dialects, excuse me, three main languages in the country, and over 100 dialects are spoken. Um, the, the SIL, Summer Institute of Linguistics in Wycliffe, and uh, Pioneer Bible Translators have people uh, there that are translating some of the remote uh, villages and their languages. So into Did the you language. learn any of the languages? Oh, yes, yes, I speak Tagalog. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I grew up speaking Tagalog. Old, I you yes. I, oh yeah, I learned I learned that as a young age. I learned all the bad words first. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the people thought it was funny to teach us the bad words, and we had an old neighbor when when we were kids. We had an old neighbor from Spain, an old Spanish man, and Dad had served in the Azores, so he picked up some Spanish. Dad is a a linguist anyway, and uh, so. His name was Mr. Fanlow, and he would give us 10 cents to go say a bad word to our father. Oh. <laughs> well, we didn't know what it meant, you know, and my father would say, you take that money back to Mr. Fanlow and tell him not to say those words. And so then Mr. Fanlow would give us another dime, and he'd say, oh, I heard if Dad didn't like that word, see if he likes this word. <laughs> we, we got into trouble a lot. <laughs> but it wasn't our fault. We didn't. But the, but the Filipinos loved teaching us all the bad words so that they could laugh at us. You know. I, uh, but I learned it quickly. And <laughs> when I was in the service, I served with a couple of Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And they could they talk English pretty good, except yes. when they got off by themselves and they didn't know anything they were saying. Yes. So yes. We all hoped it was good, but they, they were pretty <laughs> nice people. Yes, they, they are wonderful them. people. And the signs in the city are in English. The road signs are in English, unless they're Filipino names, of course. But if you would visit, you would have no trouble getting around. The, they, um, There's enough to speak very good English. In fact, uh, we just saw on the news that they're moving the call centers from India to the Philippines. I don't know what company it is. So. I was, I was asking if they're, are, are you calling from the Philippines? <laughs> <laughs> Call centers. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, a lot from India. But all, the, all over the Philippines, they're opening those call centers. But people speak in English. I wonder. Yes. We get a lot of things out of there. No, I can't help it. I, I, I can't either, so sometimes I say sorry, and I just hang up, you know, <laughs> and call back to somebody else and see if I can get one I can understand. Oh. <laughs> even living over there, there's some of, the, some of the accents that I can't, I don't understand either, so. Uh, these uh, young men might be interested in the school system in the Philippines to know that there's no seventh and eighth grade. And so you go from sixth grade to a freshman in high school. Okay, I know they're all wanting to move over there now. So. Yeah. So, so our students come to us at the seminary quite young. They're 16 and 17, you know, and maybe 15, depending on how they do and when they started. So our students are little, are very young, and we try to encourage them to get a four-year degree so they have a little bit of maturity, you know, when they graduate. And so. Hey, Thomas. You don't give me snow days over there. <laughs> we get a flood day. Flood day. <laughs> <laughs> if you have your own little boat. Yes. That's okay with Jason because they don't get any anymore. <laughs> I want to go down there to swim. Oh, oh not in that swim. water. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, not in that water. You don't want to go swimming. <laughs> it sounds like it would be fun. So. But, um, we yeah, all the fish in the water, so. Yeah. But anyway, that's, uh, is there anything, else, anything how, else? How old are they when they graduate from school? Well, from high school, they're anywhere from 15, 16 it's years old. I graduated. Yes, you could. <laughs> yeah, you would have seventh and eighth grade. They are, they are trying now. There are some of the, the teachers that are trying to add seventh grade. They're trying to, because they realize that the students are quite young when they graduate, and it makes it very difficult for them to come to the United States and go to college, because they're in school with, you know, 18-year-olds, and, and uh, they have a lot of, they have a lot of uh, freedoms at 18, and when the student gets here at 15 or 16, so it, it's, um, they're trying to add at least one year to that, yes? Two old skip to those two grades? Do they have to learn more like in the other grades? Um, no, that's a very good question. No, and then school starts at 7 o'clock until about 3, right? Yeah. Yeah, about 7 o'clock in the morning. No, they don't add hours or anything. They, they just, um, I guess they just have it all right there. They have, um, I know when I was in school, we sure went to school for long time takes that was a very that's a very good question <laughs> no they don't go all day to make up no yeah no, no reset well I let me just say again thank you very very much for your continued support and your faithful church you just have been a real blessing to us and uh, in a little while in church I'll show you how we have grown and what accomplished uh, other accomplishments what you saw today is what we're doing now and every day so and god has been blessing us and we have just continually pray that we will be worthy of the support that you sacrificed to give thanks